Hi, I'm Dr. Sebastian Gonzalez from Performance Place. This is a small portion on how to train around injuries. We're going to pick three injuries, or sorry, three exercises uh, that we use to train around certain types of pathology. And this one is going to be a shoulder impingement, or a lot of times when people have pain at the shoulder right around here and they try to raise their arm and it hurts. A lot of times you're lifting past 90 hurts, sleeping on their side hurts. Um, uh, pressure on the area is going to hurt. Sometimes pressing or, or bench pressing or push-ups are going to hurt. Now, I'm not going to go too much into pathology or the reason why these things happen because the intention of the video is not that. The intention of the video is, is to let you see that you can train around things safely. One of the major things that we run into in a sports injury practice is we see that people take excessive time off and have a lot of fear avoidance. They're very scared of using their area again, which um, rightly so, but at the same time, a lot of research indicates they should be doing some rehab and at least working around it. There's a concept of uh, structural healing time, which a lot of times that area or say a tendon might need extiration of time to heal, but it doesn't mean the rest of the area, rest of the muscles surrounding it need any healing time whatsoever. They would probably benefit better if you trained around the area. So in regards to shoulder impingement, the things we're going to use to modify are rowing. And by rowing, I'm not meaning like a concept two or water rower. I'm meaning rowing for more of a strength aspect. So it's going to be a little bit higher weight or a modification of, of how, how heavy you're typically going to go, but you might row at a lower angle. So again, there's a lot of pain with these people beyond 90 degrees. So we're just going to keep them below it. And keep in mind that all these pathologies are very independent. They're very case dependent. If we find something doesn't work for the person, we change it. So definitely these exercises are in here for educational purposes. Don't do them unless you talk to your sports injury doc or your strength coach. And I'm sure they'll have a lot of feedback in regards to what would work for you independently. The second exercise we're going to use with that is uh, scapular push-ups. And scapular push-ups are really important for the development of the serratus anterior, at least is a muscle very uh, commonly associated with shoulder conditions across the board, aside from traumatic ones. Um, it's something that typically you want to work with. Um, and there's lots of rehab exercises surrounding that. The last one is going to be deadlift. And deadlift, I know a lot of people think it wouldn't be, it's intended for the lower body, but there's a lot of core requirements. There's a lot of uh, shoulder blade stabilization requirements. You have to keep pr correct posture, which all eventually will help out your shoulder. So there's no reason to not add these types of lifts and keep everything, again, strong around it while that structure is, is improving. An upright row is a nice thing to add in regards to uh, keeping the shoulder girdle, at least some of the muscles of it, uh, strong while you're rehabbing around uh, the lack of ability to get the shoulders above 90 degrees. Notice she's got her elbows fairly low. This does have an aspect of trunk as well, uh, trunk stabilization, because you see keeping that isometric hold of the spine and the trunk and keeping position, but also too, um, there's also requirements for glute uh, as well as hamstring isometric contraction while she's moving the extremities, obviously the arms. You can do this with increased amounts of weights. It really depends uh, what type of rep range you're looking for, but for the most part, majority shoulder conditions, especially impingement, seem like they do okay with this. Scapular push-ups or push-up plus is a good thing to add into a shoulder case a lot of times. Now it's, it's important to see again what pers the person's pathology is, but um, a lot of times they don't realize just the overall motion of the shoulder. Um, a few muscles in particular which are usually um, not working well with shoulder conditions is the serratus anterior, the lower trap, the middle trap, and there's hypertonicity of the upper trap or levator. This one right here, you notice she's doing push-ups almost, but she doesn't have uh, knee, or sorry, uh, elbow flexion. She's mainly working the serratus anterior. Um, so this is a very safe exercise for a lot of shoulder conditions. Um, and again, don't be afraid to add some minor shoulder work in. Uh, this might be between some of your larger lifts. All right, so uh, we're going to use a deadlift here also too for shoulder conditions. And you'll see mainly because she has to keep her shoulders back. So go into a deadlift for me. Uh, you can go in any range you want to. But I don't think, or you can go ahead and go for reps. Uh, I don't think people realize that deadlifting is, requires many different types of uh, effort, not just for legs, lower body, and glutes. 
um, but a lot of core stabilization as well as keeping the shoulders back. I'll come around here. So isometric contractions of the shoulder girdle or of any muscle is, it's still working itself. So since a lot of the, the muscle groups which is deficient in shoulder conditions, namely the lower trap, middle trap, and the serratus, um, these ones are still being worked, at least in an isometric contraction. So this you can lo usually load up pretty well. If you have the sh shoulder condition, you can still go fairly heavy on the deadlifting and a lot of the lower body stuff. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is, again, one part of our series. Watch the other videos, um, share them, like them. It's the only way we can um, hopefully come to the top of these uh, YouTube uh, searches. And we really think that sharing information like this is helpful for you guys in regards to not only home care, but also good, having a good conversation with your healthcare provider, your strength coach, and so on. Kind of get a look into what we um, are thinking about your case, not just do's and don'ts and so on. Um, with shoulder conditions, typically though, it's hard to raise overhead again. So there are things that we would not want you to do, but th again, that video is not about that. This is more about what you can do, probably. Talk to your healthcare provider. It, uh, visit our website, p2sportscare.com, or listen to our podcast, Performance Place Sports Care, on iTunes. Take care.